Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to take a look at the new FastSAM model. We're going to see how we can do live inference on a webcam. So one of the previous videos, I showed you how we can set up the FastSAM model and also how we can do inference on individual images. In this video here, we're going to open up a live webcam stream and then do live inference with the segment anything model. The sec fast segment anything model is up to 50 times faster than the original one from Meta AI, which we're also going to see. It is still a trade-off between like accuracy and speed. We won't get the same accuracy as in the same model, but we still get pretty good accuracy. So let's just jump straight into Visual Studio Code. Let's take a look at how we can set this up so we can run live inference on our webcam or just any other camera or video stream. So I already had a video where we did the setup of this fast time model. So definitely check that out before that. We went over how we can actually set up the model. We did a comparison with the same model and so on. So in this video, we're just going to jump straight into it. The good thing about our fast time is that we can both like pass in a point. We can pass in a bounding box or like a region of interest that we want to segment anything inside. So we can also use the text prompt. We can just say like segment out the dog in the image and then it will only segment out the dog instead of like segmenting out anything. If we don't specify anything, it will basically just like segment anything in the image as it also does in the original SAM model. First of all here, we just import our fast SAM and also our fast SAM prompt, import PyTorch, NumPy, CV2, and also time so we can see how fast it actually like runs inference because they actually like specify the inference speed for actually like just passing it through the model and that is around like 50 milliseconds on the benchmark and I get similar results on my computer here. I'm using an RTX 4090 so that's a GPU on the higher end but we can still run this like fairly fast on like lower budgets um, GPUs as well and it is still significantly faster compared to the original SAM model. So if you have a large data set, if you have a large video stream and so on, like this model here is just like way better at least it will take less time. So first of all here, we can just set up the, an instance of the fast model, fast same model. So this is the exact same thing as we did in the last video. So we both have a small model and also a, a, a default model here, which is the extra large model. These fast same models, they're based on the YOLO architecture and the YOLO models. So they're basically using that as a backbone and then they have like this segmentation heads on top of the YOLO V8 backbone. If I just go inside the directory here, you can just see the FastSAM um, repository that is cloned from GitHub. I did all the setup in the previous video, so definitely check that out if you're interested. We have the two models. We also have like a line of inference. In the previous video, we used this code here where we basically just throw in an individual single image. Now let's go in and do live inference on our webcam. So yeah, we can create an instance of a model. We don't need to specify the image path right now because right now we're just going to open up a video stream with OpenCV. We need to set up our device first of all. So if CUDA is available, if we have an NVIDIA GPU on our computer and if we have installed PyTorch with CUDA support, we're going to use CUDA to do the inference or else if we're going to use the CPU. Also, if you're on a Mac a computer, it, you can also use the MPS printing what device we're using, then we can open up a video capture as we have done in all the previous computer vision tutorials and all those different kind of things. Um, so we just open up a video capture, specify the video index. So right now I have a one here. In your example, it will probably be a zero depending on how many cameras you have actually connected to your computer. So I have my main camera and then I also have my webcam where we're going to run the live inference. Then we're going to have a while loop just running as long as the webcam is open we're going to run inside of this while loop unless we hit escape on our keyboard and we will terminate but then we're going to take a, an image here so we're going to call cat.read we load in an image from the webcam stored in this frame variable then we're going to start a timer so we can actually just time how long it takes to do inference the model here, like the YOLO model, would actually go in and specify both the pre-processing, the inference speed, and also the post-processing speed. So we can directly take it from there. But if we do like additional uh, processing to the results and so on, we would just time like the whole like pass of our data through a while loop. So yeah, we get around like 50 milliseconds. So that is around like uh, 20 frames per second just for the inference. But we're doing a lot of other like processing, post-processing, pre-processing, and so on. So it will actually like be slower. So it's not fully real time, but it is still way faster compared to the mo same model. And we can still like move around, somehow get like kind of like real time, or at least we can detect what is in the frame when we're moving around with the camera, which is not possible with the same model at all. So yeah, we're starting the timer, then we can specify the model. So we have to create an, an instance of our model. Now we can just do a forward pass. Here we can specify the source that we want to pass into it. Um, so here we can either have our own while loop or we can also have this outside a while loop if we don't want to like extract the results and so on. Like this is actually like a generator that it returns. So we can go in and extract the results all the time. 
But here we just pass in a single frame because we want to have our whole while loop here. Maybe we want to do some pre-processing to our image before passing it in, or it's coming from somewhere else. So we'll just pass in the image. We could also just specify the video capture source. So we can just specify a one or a zero, and then it could also do live inference here on your webcam. You need to do a bit of modifications for actually like doing the plotting. But yeah, here we're just going to specify the frame. After that, we're going to print some of the results. So here we just have like all the results that we, ha that we are detecting. We can extract the mask. We can get the shape of the mask just to see the dimensions of the mask and also how many objects are we actually like, detecting. We can take the bounding boxes. We can extract the X, Y, X, Y corner of the bounding box. So the top left corner and the bottom right corner, we can go in and extract that directly from the results. So this is kind of similar to the YOLO V8 or, and the YOLO format and framework because this is based on the YOLO V8 architecture. And then they just have this segment anything hit on top of that backbone. We can then have a for loop running through all of our detections. So this is basically just how we can extract our results. If you want to use it in our own application and project for some specific things, this is how you can do it. If you don't want that, you just want the output, we can just directly go in and use this fast same prompt. We can throw in the frame, we can throw in our results and also the device, and then we can do like a processing of our prompt. Our prompt could either be like that we want to segment out anything. We can go in, throw in a bounding box, so we can specify a region. So basically just a region of interest. Inside of that region of interest, we want to segment all the objects within that bounding box. Again, as I talked about in the start, we can throw in a text prompt. We're going to do that when we run the live inference. We can also just have a point prompt. So just take one single point in the image and then it will try to segment out um, that whole like object or that class um, that is act like inside of that point or like around that point. Um, and then we can basically just um, end the timer. So now we have done all the processing. We can extract the results. Then we're going to end the timer. And then for the plotting, I don't really want to like time the, pl the, the plotting because that is not necessary if you want to use it in an application or a project. But now we can also go in and plot the results. So we specify the frame and also the annotations, print the number of frames per second, show the original image and also show the image where we act like plotting the results. If it queue a queue on a keyboard at any time, we will terminate our program go out of the while loop, destroy all the windows that we have opened up with OpenSV and also release our webcam. So first of all, before we're going to run it now, let's now go in and just take a look at these like classes and also the methods for actually like running the inference because this is like fairly, uh, fairly important, pretty important when we're actually like going to do the inference. And I was actually like modifying some of the code to be able to run this live inference and also display the results. So first of all here, let's just try to go in and take a look at the fast time model. So now when we create an instance, we can specify the source and also a stream. And we also have a number of other arguments as the intersection of our union, threshold, and so on. That here you can actually just go in and see the documentation. Those are the exact same as in the YOLO model. So for a source, we can specify a string, an integer, PIL, or a, like a NumPy array. So in this example, we're specifying a NumPy array. You can also just take an integer and then they will use your webcam that you have it connected to your computer. So again, it, it accepts all the types of accepted by the YOLO model as well. So it's based on the YOLO framework. And it also returns a list with all the predictions results. And then you can go in and access all the attributes, go inside the Ultralytics YOLO V8 um, documentation. Then you can see how these results are set up. I'm also going to show you when we're actually going to extract the results, but you can just on the, on the actual like predictions, you can just go in and call like dot bounding boxes or like boxes, dot mask, dot labels, classes, and so on, props for probabilities. So yeah, you can go and extract like all the results from this generator that it returns when you're just calling this predict function. So let's just delete that or like close that. Let's just hit save. We also have this prompt one, but let's now go down and take a look at the fast prompt here. So now we can have this fast prompt. And this is basically if you want to do this prompting of our fast time model, if you want to specify like the region of interest, point, um, text prompt as well. So this is basically just the, the code for that. You can go and extract the results. This is not really like that important, but here we're using this plot to results later on. So yeah, we extract our prompt processes. We specify that we want to like segment out any everything in our image. And then we go down and call our prompt process dot plot to results. And that is the function that I just showed you. We specify the image here. You might actually need to go in and, and add this image here as well, because 
this is the only thing that you actually need to go in and modify because here they actually just specify a path to image. So to be able to go in and run real time inference and also extract the results live. So we can see this webcam view um, with all the mask visualized on our plot. We actually need to go in and modify this function. So this is the only thing that you need to do. So instead of image pass, we just pass in an image. And instead of the image path here, we just set that equal to our image that we throw into our plot to results method as well. So yeah, that is pretty, pretty much like everything that you need to do here. It was just loading in an image from, um, from the code or like from um, a specified path. So we don't need to do that. We just want to run and also plot the results on the image that we load in from our webcam. Then it does all the plotting here with OpenCV and matplotlib. We don't really care too much about that. So when you clone these GitHub repositories, also as I showed you in the last video, we can just go in and run their examples with a specific like image or just a single image. But once you need to go in and do some modifications, when you want to use it in your own application and project, you need to go inside like the source code, do some modifications here and there. So that like fits your um, project and application. And that's what I've been doing here to be able to run it in real time or or like not real time, but run inference on a webcam and also visualize the results on that frame that we pass through the model. So yeah, that should be everything. Now we're ready to run the program. So just go and run the program here. It should open up the webcam. It will just take a second or two and we should be able to see the results. So we're using CUDA. I have a 4090 GPU from NVIDIA. We can all see that right now we are printing all the bounding boxes and just for the sake of the bounding boxes to see how we can extract the results, I also just plot the bounding boxes on our image. So yeah, here we can see that we are just taking or and we are segmenting out like anything in our, uh, in our frame. I'll just take my camera up and move it a bit around so you guys can see the results. So it actually like looks pretty good. It does a very good job at act like segmenting out the different objects here. Uh, we run around like five to six frames per second. It also depends on like how many tasks that I've opened um, and so on. But again, this is still way, way faster and up to like 50 times faster than the original same model. So yeah, it looks pretty good. So here we can see the results from the YOLO model. So once we do a forward pass, this is actually like what it returns. So it returns the speed, the pre-processing speed, four milliseconds, around 60 milliseconds for inference, two milliseconds for post-processing. We can see the image dimensions. We can also like try to lower the image dimensions as well. Here we can see that we're detecting 14 objects. So this will be the, the shapes of our mask. And then we also return um, this format here, or like this is the dimensions of our image. So yeah, again, we just, Extract, we have 14 masks with these image dimensions, and then we can extract that and go in and plot it. We can also go in and extract the results directly. So right now I just have a for loop running through all the bounding boxes. Instead of having the bounding boxes here, you can also just have the mask if you want to extract all the mask in the image and do some processing and of that. Right now we just take the results, throw it into the plot function, and then it does everything for us because it's a bit harder to actually like go in and plot all the mask with OpenCV and so on. But yeah, you can go and extract all the results and it follows the same structure as the YOLO V8 model. So yeah, here we can just have our bounding boxes. And then let's just go in. We don't want to print that. And you can see that we extract the bounding boxes. So these are the coordinates of all the bounding boxes of the objects that we're segmenting out in the frame. So we have the top left corner and the bottom right corner. So this is basically how we can go and extract it. Let's now go down and actually see if we can throw in a text prompt. So instead of throwing in like this everything prompt, we can also go down and try a text prompt. So we have our annotation equal to our prompt underscore process dot text prompt. Then we can basically just throw in a text, a cream colored chair. So let's try to see if we can take my chair here in the background. Like it's not going to like perfectly segment out like the chairs and so on because um, you can see like there's an armrest and so on. So it will not be perfect all the time, but if you have some really good images and you just want to like segment out um, some, some very simple objects in the frame, you can basically do that. So yeah, it can be used for a lot of different things. Also, if you have like a box prompt or like fixed optics in the scene with point prompts, this is really easy. There's a lot of use cases for these fast segment anything models. So let's run it. Let's try to see how this how it takes this cream colored chair. I'll just take my webcam up here and then let's point it at the chair in the background. Let's see results. So 
So here we can see that it actually like segments out this cream color chair like um, once in a while. So sometimes it acts like misses detection. Sometimes it gets the whole chair. So sometimes also like just the back of it. Also sometimes the walls. That's not like too good. Let's take the camera a bit further away. There we go. They've got a pretty good detection. Also here when we can see like the full object, it acts like does a pretty good job once it can see the whole chair. So now we get a false prediction. So yeah, sometimes uh, we get some good predictions here and there. We can see that this runs like significantly slower because now we're using this text prompt as well. So that will slow down like the whole algorithm and like the whole model significantly because now we need to go in and use the clip model to act like encode the text from a text prompt and then still go in and segment out anything. So yeah, all these methods here, they will like slow down the process. But if we're just running like segment anything, we can get fairly good speed when we are doing live inference on a webcam. So thank you guys for watching this video here. I hope you have learned a ton and that you can use this in your own projects and applications. If you either want to do like auto labeling of your data set, if you just want to like segment out specific objects in your scene. So right now we don't really need to train like an, an object detection model or like an object segmentation model before we can go in and segment objects in our scene, especially if you just have like a couple of images that you want to run inference on and not like real time inference on lower budget or like on the edge. Then you can go and use this model here without pre-training it and so on. Again, it requires a lot more processing power compared to like a standard YOLO V8 model for segmentation, but this can be used for other use cases as well. So really cool model, way faster than the original SAM model. I'm excited for this. I'm excited to play around with it a bit more and create some projects and applications around it. So thank you guys for watching again. Remember to hit the subscribe button under the video here or else I'll see you next week guys. Bye for now.